G'day, I'm Peter Sheen and welcome to Flip on Fox Business. I look different, I sure as heck sound different, and I'm hoping by the end of the show, you'll be thinking different. Business today requires new perspectives. We need to think counterintuitively and act boldly with disregard for business as usual. And that's the difference. The ability to take unconventional thinking and apply it to conventional business practices. It's the key to flip. Massive study just got finished, not published yet, looking at who made the most money in the recent upswing, but didn't study what they did in the upswing, studied what they did in the last recession. Here is what they found, that the businesses, the brands that continued to innovate, to take risks and do cool new stuff, even when the market was getting pummeled, they nailed it on the upswing. No one will know the difference between a real Gucci bag and a fake Gucci bag. And she said, yes, they can. And I said, how? She said, stitching. <laughs> I said, $1,450 worth of stitching. She said, yes. <laughs> you have at one level of a purchasing decision, the stitching. That is, we have 24 hour free business center. We have 450 hotels, including one in Russia. You know, we got all this sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, the real reason people buy is, this is the bit where you're supposed to get involved. <laughs> Take your right hand, do this. Yes, it's a wanky speaker activity, but do it anyway. Now, take that shaking right hand, place it on the shoulder of the person next to you, shake them, say, wake up, this guy needs us to get involved. <laughs> oh my gosh, you might be more enthusiastic than the general managers, but only a little bit, right? You're all sitting there going, just try and teach me something, monkey boy, come on. <laughs> Actually, it's probably kangaroo boy, but anyway, get involved, right? So stitching, but the real reason what drives this is the back half, the back third of the brain, is the story we tell ourselves. Is it possible that the story that drives your behavior changes depending on your experience of life? No one buys legal services based on the quality of your brochure. They just don't. They don't even read your brochure. Yeah, there's some really pretty ones. I get it, right? Why do they buy? How, what makes someone engage a legal firm? Yet someone says, you got to talk to, you know, Samantha, she's the best litigator in X I've ever met. You need to talk to Cam, he is the man when it comes to these kind of transactions. You need to talk to, they don't even say the firm half the time. They say the what? The person, but we're so paranoid about building the person's reputation, because what happens if you build their brand? Now everyone's going to want them. That's what people in training say. Oh, you don't want to train people today because all you do, train them up and then they leave. What's the worst alternative? You don't train them and they stay. <laughs> What's your worst alternative? You don't build their brand and they underperform. They don't draw in. Like Professional service marketing is never a push activity, is it? It's always a pull activity. It's never about interrupting people doing what they want. It's always about positioning experts as the go-to person in their field. Your job as a manager, your job as a leader or as a recruiter, whatever, is to be able to adapt your behaviour to meet the needs of the perspective, whether it be cultural, generational, exactly as Franz says, and then to bring out of that diversity, the new idea, because it's in the cracks that the innovation happens. That is, it's in the differences, whether it be differences between silos, differences between cultural backgrounds, that's where, that's where the cool stuff happens. What is usually a market breakthrough, what is usually a, oh my gosh, who should, how do we not, was started long before it was the obvious thing to think. Because everyone says, you know, there's a lot of research out now about how smart crowds are and that crowds will figure out their way through traffic and that you shouldn't lay paths on a college campus because just lay grass and people will walk where the paths should be. But in order for that path to start, what had to happen first? A trailblazer had to cut the path and go across the grass, right? To which someone noticed and followed and then over a period of time, you wore a track. Crowds don't innovate. Industries don't innovate. They don't. 
individuals do, individual people, individual firms are who drives innovation. Industries then do what? Evaluate. Yeah, the individual drives the change. EverQuest, old game, not even that popular, but there are a minimum of 50,000 people playing that game right now. The average player plays 34 hours a week. People are like, oh my gosh, that's a full-time job. I know, they're doing it at their full-time jobs. <laughs> and for some of them, it is their full-time job, because what they worked out is that some people take their online world so seriously that they take the real-world money they have in real-world jobs to buy online stuff. So these guys worked out they'd be better off having an online job, making online money, selling online money for real-world money. Now they make more real-world money in an online job than they made real-world money in a real-world job, and they used to work for real-world people like you. And you played Frogger. <laughs> no amount of technology makes up for bad product matching and poor service. I've been going to conferences for nine years. Technology is going to end the industry. We'll no longer talk to people. Rubbish, 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 rubbish. What technology does is support the service of our clients. If anything's going to matter in the future, it will continue to be the relationships that you build. The difference is that those relationships can be started and nurtured through technology. If I'm going to stay at a hotel that promises me that tomorrow, you know, that tomorrow's an important day and that you understand that, aren't you just hoping I like nail myself when I do that? <laughs> if you're working for a brand that makes the promise that tomorrow is an important day, what, needs to, what are you basically telling me? Yes, that you understand the stress I'm going through in anticipation of a huge event, which might be a presentation, it might be a wedding, it might be that my sporting team is going to lose the net, whatever. And your job is to remove the complexity, that is make it easy, simple, flowing, so all I have to focus on is my big day. Leaving a job, get promoted. Leaving that job, get promoted. Leave that job, get promoted. Leave that job, get promoted. Been there for three months, need a sabbatical. I'm going to San Diego or Mexico to surf, but hold my job open though for me, please. Come back, leave that job, leave that job, leave that job. Start my own brokerage, start my own advisory business. Now I'm the boss. So as an organization, what do you do? Three things. One, you do the relationship connected culture stuff that we only talked a really little bit about because then instead of leaving every two years, they leave every three and your return on investment from two to three years is exponentially better than from one to two. Second thing you do is you create sideways ladders within the pyramid so you allow these lateral movements to take place without going vertical but you make sure they don't happen outside of the organization and three, you love them when they go. Not because they'll come back, that's the greatest illusion ever. They don't. But so they say nice things about you when they're gone. And the same principle would apply for these guys as customers, given they're fleeting between one brand and the next. I remember you, I was at a symposium, for lack of a better word, you were conducting. It was a tour de force, I might say, Peter. I'll see you on the flip side.